Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and guess who's got a fabulous project to share with you today. I'm really excited about this because I've been actually had part of this sitting on my desk for literally months, like five or six months, the window and the ledge with the flowers. It's just been sitting here and I haven't done anything with it. So I am really excited that I had the opportunity to find a fabulous project for this and I can't wait to share with you how I did it. Now, it's not hard, but it's not fast. It's easy to make. It's just got a lot of steps to it. So this isn't the kind of card you're making like a couple dozen of and sending to everybody you know. This is for somebody special. But I wanted to show you how simple it really is, and I have some great tips to go with it. So let me show you how I put it together. First of all, I'm using a couple of different things. I'm using um, the stamp set Happy Home, and it comes in a bundle with the coordinating frame uh, thinlets, framelets, whatever lits these are. And I have a fun little tip that I did with this particular uh set of framelits. I have these, these are in little magnetic sheets that I get. Um, and I put two on here because that's how many pieces come in this set of framelits. So I always put the number of all my sets on here. But then on this one, I wrote the dimensions. So the window is three and three quarters by three in terms of the size piece of paper you need to cut this out. But the layer to fit underneath this is three and three eighths by two and a half. And I wrote that down because I measure it every flip in time. So hello, if you write it down, it'll always be there for you. Smart, Dina. Um, sometimes I... I store my frames or framelits inside the case with a stamp set, but in this case, there's actually more than one stamp set that coordinate with these framelits, so I did not do that. It's just in with all my regular framelits. Okay, so I'm going to use this cute image. There's also this fun image as well in that come in the stamp set, and then, of course, the bench. And then there's some different sayings and some flowers and all that goodness. So let me show you how I did. Well, actually, and then there's one more thing I need to show you. I'm also using the Pictogram Punches stamp set because I used the two cute flowers that coordinate with the set of Itty Bitty Accent Punch Pack. Now, this is the set of three punches. Here are the other two. And if you don't have these yet, you need them. This is right up there on my very, very most important to have before it gets discontinued continued forever list. And the reason is because we don't really have anything to replace these. And I do use these images quite a bit. So I think it's great. And I think but I'd have to check that this might be in a bundle with these for a discount. Same with this when you order them together, it's a discount, but only while supplies last. So um, make sure you take advantage of that opportunity before it's gone. Okay. Now, as far as the stamping goes, it is pretty easy. Uh, first of all, I have a card base that is crumb cake cardstock, and I am just going to fold that in half. Then I have a layer of pool party that is four by five and a quarter, which is just kind of a standard layer. And I'm going to stamp that with my hardwood background stamp in pool party ink. And I love the hardwood because it's such a great versatile set. You can do so many different, or not set, background. You can do so many different things with it and it really is fun. And here is the perfect example of how versatile it is. I'm gonna just grab a piece of printed paper, or back paper to protect my area here. Um, what makes this so versatile is I'm stamping it on a piece of pool party. Who would have thought? I mean, you would have think, thought like crumb cake or brown or something that's wood colored. But in this day and age, you can color your wood whatever color you want. Okay, I'm going to actually stamp off the first layer of this ink. And the reason is because it's a little intense otherwise. And I will show you I have one that I stamped full strength. And then I'm just going to take my block. I still have a little adhesive on here from my fun, my fun foam uh, stamping. If you didn't catch that, it's another video I've done. Okay, so you can see this is a little bit more subtle. Here's the full strength version and it's like, whoa, that is a lot of wood in your face. That sounds terrible. But anyway, <laughs> so here's the difference. Okay, I'll set that aside. Then um, I have already die cut my 
window as well as the window sill. I did this in the corrugated paper. And then we're going to stamp and color. Okay, so to stamp this, I'm using archival black ink on my piece of, uh, this is watercolor paper. And I'm just gonna set my um, window over the top so that I can make sure I get the right placement. Sorry, it's sometimes it is hard to stamp and think at the same time. I mean, it's like walking and chewing gum. I'm telling you, it is not for the faint of heart. So I have this stamped and then I'm going to use my ink pads and color in. So for the most of this in the grassy areas, I'm going to use pool or not pool party, uh, pear pizzazz. And then up here in the tree part, I will use old olive and then add some old olive accents as well. Just grabbing my pear pizzazz because I didn't have that open. So I always just uh, squeeze my ink pad to the lid to get the color. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick that color up and start coloring. So I'm just going to brush color around on the watercolor paper. And it's so nice because it uh, watercolor paper just makes it so easy to color and to blend. And I'll just kind of let that go. Then I will pick up my darker old olive and just kind of color the trees. And here I'm being kind of splotchy. I'm sort of dabbing versus painting, painting. And the reason is I want a little bit more um, texture to show up and I don't want it to be just one solid color. I think that leads to more realistic looking water coloring. How do you like that for a fancy talk? Um, so like I said, I'm just dabbing, 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 and then I will probably come back and dab a little bit more once it's dry to get even darker colors. Uh, I think, you know, I'm also going to add a little bit more here to accent the hill and then the edge of the horizon. Now the other thing uh, I think that makes watercolor look particularly good is if you color the background in. Sometimes people kind of ignore the background, but I don't think that is a wise thing to do. I think the color in the background is really important because it really makes things pop. So to illustrate that, let me show you the difference between the two. This has the blue background and this does not. It really makes a difference with how it looks, if you ask me. I mean, I'm not necessarily an expert, but I do have some experience. Okay, now instead of pool party though, I'm choosing soft sky. It's just a little lighter color. And I think it'll look a little bit better. So I'm going to start near the bottom. Now I want to be careful to not mix with my grass. Otherwise I will have bleeding occur. And bleeding is no good when you're watercolor painting unless that's what you're going for. But that is not what we're going for. So I'm going to be careful to not mix it with the edges of anything I've already painted. And I think that will look good. Okay, now one last little thing that I need to do, and I'm gonna, I'm actually probably gonna wait till this is completely dry, and that is I'm gonna color my little heart flowers in with, I used Calypso Coral, but I'm gonna wait till it's dry, otherwise they'll just bleed. So that's no good, even though they're heart flowers. <laughs> All right, let's put together the windowsill, because that is a little, not tricky, just the labor intensive portion of this project. So I have pre, uh, stamped and cut several flowers. I will show you. I've got one here, one more that I need to do. This is Bermuda Bay and Pool Party. Again, those are from the um, pictogram picks, or isn't that what that's called? I don't know. The stamp set was just here. Who knows? <laughs> the, <laughs> the supplies will be listed in my uh, on my blog, and the link to that blog post will be in the description of this video. Don't you like how totally perfect and accurate I am with all this. All right, now to assemble this, first of all, I'm going to adhere, and let's just look here. Yeah, I did pop up my windowsill. So I'll take some dimensionals and pop those up. And if I um, start running short on time, I will speed up the process of putting this together so you can still see what I'm doing, but it'll be a little faster and I won't yap the whole time. 
Okay, so I adhered that to my window. Then, as always, glue dots and foofing. Okay, so here we go. Um, I used the bird builder punch to get the leaves. And then I'm just literally going to start placing these on the window so in a pleasing to the eye arrangement. <laughs> Okay, so I've added quite a few leaves in here. I think that looks pretty good. And then, of course, I'll add some pearls. But the other thing that I have are I cut just some super skinny little strips of cardstock. And I got this idea from uh, Mercedes Weber. She's pretty awesome. Um, from My Paper Paradise. And I'm just going to twirl these around. This is just a little skewer. I'm going to twirl them so they're kind of curvy curly curvy you get it spiral it's like a it's like a spiral perm ringlet like do you remember did you ever get perms with you i had an afro one summer my mom gave me perms when i was a kid and um let's just say they were a little wild at the time <laughs> i was in fifth grade nobody's supposed to look good in fifth grade i don't think it's like murphy's law right <laughs> anyway so I'm just going to tuck these in behind and they just add kind of a fun little touch and uh, they're just kind of cute. So, and to do this, I just cut a really skinny strip on my paper cutter. Like I barely moved it over and then cut. So it's kind of neat. Now it's totally going to flatten out if you um, send this, but I still think it's worth doing because it's really cute and it's fun and it's a little different. Um, and my glue dot is on my fingernail. <laughs> that gives like a whole new meaning to Lee press on nails, right? <laughs> do you remember those? Did you ever do that? When I was a kid, I did press on nails. I thought I was so cool. So adult. They were horrible. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple of those. And I might add more. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, now to finish this up, I'm going to pop my whole frame up from my picture or my watercoloring and I'm sure I'm over time so I'm gonna have to speed some of this up so forgive me if there's cartoon voice in my video at some point but this way you can see the whole shebang which I think is cool and then of course all that is really left is to add pearls which I will just do you don't have to watch me do that part um, but then uh, adhere it to the card and I haven't forgotten about my little flowers in case you're wondering Okay, but it helps if you take the backing off of the dimensionals, just saying. Then I will glue this directly to my card. And that's it. It's so pretty. So, so, so pretty. And then stamp my greeting at the bottom. So anyway, I hope you liked this. I hope it was worth, it's worth making one for you. Um, like I said, you can add your greeting. I did birthday because that was part of our challenge for this week. But if you wanted a different saying, there's some really sweet ones that come with the set. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I love stamping with you and I appreciate you being here. So make sure that you have a great um, day and keep on stamping. Bye, guys.